Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt, and today is One Ounce Wednesday. Today's One Ounce Wednesday pour came as quite a surprise to me. A while back, I was on ReserveBar.com, and I saw a $550 bottle of bourbon that was being pre-sold. It looked super fancy and super intriguing, so I emailed the company and asked for a media sample. Then I totally forgot I even did it until today. Today I opened up this box and look what happened. We got an envelope and we got a tube. Today on this One Ounce Wednesday, we are reviewing Rare Hair, 17 year Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished in cognac casks. America, America, America. It's got a funny bunny on the envelope. America. Does that look like the Playboy bunny? It certainly does. This is Rare Hair 1953. Rare Hair invites you on a discovery of rare stocks, unique blends, and boldly finished spirits in collaboration with artisan producers around the world. It's our privilege to share these extraordinary spirits for our close friends to savor and share. It's got a bunny with a bow tie, so you know it's polite. Rare Hair 1953 Anniversary Edition. Our tribute to the year Playboy was founded, 1953, is Rare Hair's inaugural product release. Bottled at 111 proof in a luxury package, this 17 year aged straight bourbon whiskey was finished in XXO cognac casks from the Champagne region of France. Because of the whiskey's rarity, only 1,953 bottles were produced for the U.S. market. Rare Hair's 1953 release embodies craftsmanship, sophistication, and a passion of playboy spirits. The Rare Hair Society offers members exclusive access to luxury travel experiences, intimate events, private barrel releases, and more. If there's such thing as an intimate private barrel release, oh. membership is reserved for owners of the 1953 inaugural release at this time. Subscribe for future updates or shop Rare Hair 1953. Are they saying that if you buy a bottle of Rare Hair 1953 bourbon whiskey finished in XXO cognac casks, that you will be invited to sex parties and barrel picks? Let's get it on. This $550 bottle is only 700 milliliters. Case weight, six pounds, interesting. Pallet weight, 1,150 pounds. That's how much my pallet weighs because quality things weigh more and my pallet is superb. It doesn't say so on here, but I have seen on their website and in many other places on the internet that this 17 year old bourbon is actually sourced from Kentucky. So what we're looking at here is basically Playboy bourbon. And to be 100% transparent with you, I don't know how to feel about that, or I don't know how I should feel about that, or I don't know how 2022 would want me to feel about that. So for the rest of this video, I will leave all the sex jokes out. I will just give this Rare Hair 1953 the breast review I can give it. So let's see what happens when Playboy gets a hold of 17 year old Kentucky bourbon and then throws it inside of a cognac cask, bottles it into a super fancy and sleek 700 milliliter bottle and slaps a $550 price tag on it. Rare Hair 1953. Chocolate. Hmm. Chocolate and dates. I am not sure exactly how long this was finished in the cognac casks. I think I read somewhere like nine months, but the cognac has really, really influenced the nose of this bourbon. The nose is pretty and chocolatey, 
but the nose also provides a little bit of bitterness. Kind of smells like an apple fritter a little bit. Yeah, like an apple fritter you get at the bakery. No, maybe a, or maybe like a blueberry fritter. Yeah, more like a blueberry fritter. Nice color on it, beautiful color. Definite cinnamon here. In all honesty, this doesn't feel like I'm nosing a bourbon. This feels like I'm nosing something not bourbon. A little bit of teriyaki on here. A little bit of teriyaki. Overall, the nose is very interesting. It's sweet. It's a bit bitter. It gets a little savory as well. But like I said, this doesn't smell like bourbon. Wherever this bourbon came from, its roots, they gone. All right, let's see what a $550 Playboy bourbon tastes like down the hatch. Oh wow, that's really good. Holy ball sacks. Pardon my language. Wow. See what it did? It gave me the goosers. That's a telltale sign something's either really good or really bad. When all the hair on my arms stand up and it gives me the goose bumpies. Front of the palate, mid palate, back palate, first sip experience, phenomenal. The extended finish, the remainder, the leftovers, the very, very end. Just a tad drying, just a tad drying. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Once this whiskey entered my mouth, there was an explosion of a million different flavors. And I loved them all. It was like a giant love explosion in my mouth. The palate? The drinking experience is on another level. Unless, of course, that was just first sip of itis, which is the disease of taking one sip and then determining whether or not it's fantastic. Sometimes first sip of itis results in you saying something is good when it's bad. Other times first sip of itis results in you saying something is bad when it's actually really good. Either way, first sip of itis can cause you to look stupid and have people question your credibility. And since I don't want to be spreading first sip of itis from my garage to your home, I'm going to go ahead and take a second sip, which is actually the cure for first sip of itis. Second sip down the hatch. Oh, wow. How is it that good? How is it that good? That's unreal. Oh boy. That makes me wish I had 550 extra dollars laying around that I could just spend on bourbon. Once it hits the palate, it's like a slingshot and just pulls back all the way to the dangly thing on the back of your throat, the Voss deferens. And then it, you let it releases and shoots forward and then recoils back. The experience is really ridiculous. That is so good. In order to score this properly, I must do a one ounce Wednesday first. I must compare it to something. I wanna compare this $550 bottle of Rare Hair, 1953, to Bardstown Bourbon Company's Fronde. This is a blend of six and 11 year old Kentucky bourbon finished in a Fronde cognac cask. So it doesn't have the age of the rare hair, but does it matter? Do I care? Frown. Now let's keep in mind that the Bardstown Bourbon Company Frown is a $150 bottle, $400 less than the Playboy. Playboy Frown. Wow. The noses on these are ridiculously different. The nose on the Playboy is just pouring out of the glass. Where the nose on the Fron is a little bit darker and more subdued. Now I'm gonna taste the Fron to see how it stacks up. Oh wow, a little bit darker, 
little bit flatter, a little bit more one note than the Playboy, the rare hair. When I tasted this rare hair, I thought it was special. I thought it was very special. And then I just tasted the Bardstown Bourbon Company Fraund, which is very good. That Bardstown Bourbon Company collaboration doesn't hold a candle to this rare hair 1953. This Playboy is one bad boy. Very difficult to score because it's not like any bourbon I've had before. I thought this was a gimmick. I thought this was kind of a joke, but here we are. I reserve the category of nines for best whiskeys I've ever tasted. Like the best of the best, the most exceptional, the standouts, the non-repeatables, the stuff that is insane receive nines. This particular review is very difficult. I'm going to score this, but before I do, I'm talking to you, the person out there who has a ton of money or is just stupid with their money and doesn't have the money to spend on this, but will based off of a review from a fat ginger sitting in his garage at midnight. Do not buy this based off of my review. These are my honest thoughts, and this is exactly how I feel about this. But do not spend $550 on a bottle of whiskey because I enjoy it. Understand? Please understand that. With that being said, 9.1. It's a 9.1, damn it. It's a 9.1. It's incredible. I love it a lot. I can't get enough of it. I want a bottle. Suck on that. It's a 9.1. Thank you for watching. Hit subscribe. My name is Matt. This is ADHD Whiskey. And like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on pulling a rabbit out of your hat on your first attempt because no one saw that coming. A little bit of a surprise, a little bit of a curveball. You expected to pull out maybe a clump of hair or some dandruff, but guess what? Pulled the rabbit right out of the hat. Sometimes you'll expect the unexpected, and what will happen is the expected, which is not the unexpected. Other times you won't expect the expected, and then you can expect that the unexpected, expectedly, or unexpectedly, no idea what the hell that was about, but <sighs> calories in, calories out, am I right?